If you love a dish that is light, lemony, and delicious, you are gonna love this recipe that we're gonna make today. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. Today, we're gonna make a really easy recipe that is full of vibrant colors. It tastes amazing, it is light, it is yummy, yummy, yummy. I have a version of this made in the Ninja Foodie already on my website. It is a lemon pasta. I use angel hair instead of orzo. So definitely, if you have the Ninja Foodie, you can make this as well. You can either follow that recipe and sub in the orzo, or you could make it, if you have the OL series, using steam and crisp, okay? All right, let's jump right in because this is one of those recipes where pretty much you dump it in, you set it, and you let it cook, right? And those are the ones that we absolutely love, right? Okay, so with the speedy, I'm gonna use the inner pot, which is always supposed to be in when you're cooking. To the inner pot, I'm adding two cups of vegetable broth. Now you could use chicken broth if you wanted to because you could change up the protein. I'm using some shrimp as the protein. You could make it vegetarian by omitting the protein. You can make it vegan by omitting the, the butter as well. And I'm not gonna use the shrimp right now, but let me talk about them before I get rid of them off my cutting board. They are small shrimp. You want small shrimp for this recipe. These are about 60 to 80 count per pound, okay? So they are small. They are shell off, but raw, okay? That's the ones I like to use. You can use already cooked shrimp if that's what you have because we add them in at the end. Um, so you just warm them through that way and that's fine. But I don't like already cooked shrimp because I think they get rubbery when you rewarm them up. So I don't, I don't do it that way. To the vegetable uh, broth, I like to add two tablespoons of butter. That is optional. Like I said, you don't have to use that if you want to make this a vegan recipe. And then I have the juice from one lemon, which is about two tablespoons. Just the juice goes in right now. The zest we will use afterwards, after it cooks, okay? Then I have a bulb of garlic that I have peeled and lightly smashed. Whole cloves are perfectly fine in this recipe, okay? It's going to give a delicious flavor without being overbearing. So use the whole bulb, trust me on this one, it works, it's amazing, of whole or lightly smashed garlic. Probably about eight to 10 cloves is what you want. If you wanted to sub in minced garlic, use about a teaspoon or so of minced garlic, that would be fine. Our Parmesan cheese, I have two ounces that is finely shredded. You can buy the bag kind or shred it yourself, whichever you like. That goes in later, so I'm gonna go ahead and move that over here. Then we have our orzo. An orzo is a pasta. It looks kind of like a long rice, but it is a pasta. I have seven ounces, which is one cup, okay? That's what you wanna use for this recipe. And then just sort of make sure it's under the liquid. Some got on my butter, so I'll turn the butter over. Okay, that looks good. Now we're gonna put our rack in. This is the rack that comes with the Speedy. There's these little legs here that fold out. We're gonna go on the top layer, so we want to have them folded out so that it sits right here on the top. Now we put our vegetables on. What you use for your vegetables is up to you, really. Um, I had some asparagus that I was gonna use, but Jeff, um, Jeff forgot to bring it, so we're, not, we're gonna skip that right now. We don't need it. Um, I have some spinach for the green pop of color. I like to use assorted bell peppers. I used um, those mini peppers and sliced them into rounds. So I have red and orange and yellow peppers. I don't really recommend using green peppers in this recipe, but you could use all red peppers. Like if you just wanted to get one bell pepper and slice it into strips, that would work fine. So go ahead and put those peppers right on the rack there. As much in a single layer as you can, okay? Then I have one half of a Vidalia onion, which is about a cup. And you can make the pieces, you can slice them so they're long slice, you can dice them if you want smaller pieces. However you want it to be in your final dish is fine. What I did was I sliced it, but then cut it into thirds. So they're small little slices there. We're gonna put those on, kind of spread them out a little bit. 
and then I have some cherry tomatoes. This is about one cup of halved cherry tomatoes, and we're gonna put those on right there. Isn't this gorgeous? So, so pretty. You wanna drizzle with some olive oil, so maybe about a tablespoon. And then we wanna season up our vegetables with a little bit of salt and pepper. How much you use is completely up to you. I'm gonna use about a half of a teaspoon of salt. That looks good, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. You can always season to taste afterwards because you know various broths, uh, vegetable broths, are going to be a little bit different. So in in the salt content, so you can definitely go light on the salt here in the beginning, and then season to taste after it's done. And that's it, my friends. That's all that goes in right now. We want the lever for the speedy up in the rapid cook mode. We're going to turn the speedy on. We want to go to steam crisp here. We want our temperature to be 400 degrees. Our time is 10 minutes. And we'll hit start. Now it's gonna take a little while for the liquid to heat to produce the steam because the steam crisp function is a dual function, which is awesome for so many things. It gives us the moist cooking environment of steam that starts off the cooking process. And then we have the dry heat of the air crisping lid that will kind of roast and char those vegetables a little bit. So this is a great function to use for this type of a recipe because we get our pasta cooked and we get our vegetables a little charred and it's delicious when it's all mixed together. So now we just wait. When the 10 minutes is up, we will open up the lid, check on things, make sure the vegetables are cooked to our liking, and then we'll get on and finish the recipe because it takes about three minutes after that. You should be starting to smell the uh, vegetables, really getting that char on them. I started to smell it about maybe three minutes ago. So if you're making this at home, you're gonna smell it. Trust me, just leave it alone. You're not burning anything. Look at this magic. Oh my gosh. I mean, that is gorgeous. Like these are, perfectly roasted vegetables. And we have our orzo cooked on the bottom. Now, one thing about the Ninja Speedy that's kind of a little tricky is this, this uh, rack here. So there is a handle here. I don't love it. It's hard to get a hold of, but I found with these tongs I can get a hold of it. Other people are being innovative. And then just let your vegetables fall down. Now do not cry when you see that there's liquid in here. It's fine, it's fine, okay? No worries, you didn't ruin anything. That's the way it is right now. It's perfectly fine. Mix this all together. Now you wanna drain the shrimp of the water because I thaw my shrimp in cold water and throw those in right now. Throw in your lemon zest. That's the lemon zest of one lemon. Throw in your Parmesan cheese. Throw in your spinach. You can use as much or as little spinach as you want. Doesn't matter. Now toss this all around. Try to get your shrimp under the orzo if you can uh, because the heat from the orzo is what's going to cook those shrimp. This is so beautiful, it's so easy. I'm gonna use all the spinach because, you know, why not? It wilts down to practically nothing. Okay, so give a good stir here. Try to get all the spinach leaves also, like kind of, you don't have to be totally under, but like kind of mixed in with the, the uh, broth and everything. And then close the lid. Close the lid for five minutes and then you're ready to dish up. It's been five minutes, so let's go ahead and open up the lid. And it looks like, oh yeah, it looks like our shrimp are cooked. So just do a little look, a little looky-loo, and your shrimp should be light pink, a little bit curled. Um, these look perfect. Now, 
I will say that my friend Amber used larger shrimp when she, she helped me with this recipe. We made it together, so she tested it for me. Um, and she used larger shrimp and they took a lot longer to cook and she had to sit there, keep her lid down and actually go back on sear saute. So do yourself a favor, don't use the large shrimp. Get the less expensive small ones, 60 to 80 count. And I, I you know, got them in the frozen food section of the grocery store. Make sure they're thawed in cold water. You can thaw them in the refrigerator, um, you know, overnight if you want. Um, I always put them in a bowl though, of course. Um, or you could rapid thaw them while you're prepping for the dish in cold water. And that works great as well. Okay, so we are all done now. Now, one thing I would recommend before you plate it up is taste for seasonings and make sure it's deliciously seasoned with salt and pepper. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. So I'm just getting the orzo because if the orzo is well seasoned and tastes good, the whole dish is gonna be well seasoned and taste delicious. So here we go. Oh. It is perfectly cooked. It is perfectly seasoned. It is perfectly delicious. Oh my goodness. I love this recipe. Okay, now I could take it out with the tongs and not dirty another tool, but you know what? It takes too long. So I'm gonna grab my little scooper here because now we are ready to put this into our serving bowl. This will easily serve four people, maybe even six. Just depends on your appetite, um, but Pro you know, actually, probably six. If you eat about a cup of it. Because I've taken about, what, five good scoops out? Oh my gosh. Isn't that beautiful? All right. Now, what I like to do is put some basil leaves on. You could do this... A number of ways okay you could just put the whole basil leaves on which actually is kind of kind of cool looking or you could tear it okay and just put it over as well either way looks fine well, I like to add a few lemon slices so if people want a little more lemon flavor they can squeeze that over their uh, dish but that is totally optional now you don't have to go to this trouble. You don't have to buy a second lemon for this if you don't want to. Get the seeds out though. If you're gonna be serving guests, you don't want them to bite into a seed. And then just put it around the outside of the dish. There we go. That's so pretty. All right, let's dish some up because it doesn't matter what it looks like. It matters what it tastes like. So let me get in here. I'm gonna get a whole clove of garlic and I'm gonna eat it right here on camera because I wanna show you that it is not too pungent or spicy or anything like that. Ooh, speaking of spice, you know what would be really good is a little bit of red pepper flakes. If you, if you like it a little spicy, add that. Okay, first thing, shrimp. They better be perfectly cooked. And they are, oh. Oh my gosh, so amazing. Okay, I promised garlic clove. Oh my gosh, the flavor is amazing. It's like roasted garlic. Maybe not quite as sweet, but because it simmers in that broth and it's, you know, cooked for a while, it really sweetens up. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. All right, now for the orzo, a little bit of spinach and a basil leaf. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, it is so, so good. This is one of those recipes that you can make to serve to guests because it's fancy. You can serve it any time during the week because it's quick. It's so refreshing, it's so delicious, it's light. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this one and I hope you do too.